Hello, this is Don O'Malley from Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have the first of three parts of Haunted Harbor. Now this is a 15 chapter cereal from 1944. When it was re-released in 1951, it was retitled as Pirate's Harbor. This stars Kane Richmond and Kay Edelgen. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. I have been authorized to announce that the schooner Dolphin, owned by James Marsden of this port, has not been reported for three months and is hereby declared lost at sea. Hey, I understand there's a million dollars in gold aboard the Dolphin, Mr. Galbraith. Yes, that's right. Pretty tough. Have a tremendous storm like that come up and the ship is just four days out? Sure, but the Dolphins weathered a lot worse storms. It's an odd coincidence that as soon as she gets a million dollars worth of gold bullion aboard her, she disappears. Now, wait a minute, Lawson. Don't start talking like that. You know as well as I do that Jim Marsden is as honest as daylight. Of course, he has his little financial difficulties, but every creditor of his will get every cent that's coming to them. But he still has his other ship, the Wahari. Perhaps not for long. Vori sold some of Marsden's overdue notes, and he likes to be paid on the line. Yeah, I know all about Vori's. He'd sooner see a man bankrupt than to see him get a chance to make good. Well, here's Captain Morrison now. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Well, thanks. I'm a little busy right now. Tommy here does all my drinking. Fine. What do you have, Tommy? Galbraith? How are you? I'm fine, Jim. Hi. Hi, Lawson. Hi. I'm awfully sorry, old man. Anything I can do? Well, I'm taking the Wahari out again with the next tide. I'd like to put a few stores aboard if it can be arranged. Why, anything you want, Jim. At your own terms. You better see Voyage before you sail, Captain Marsden. About your notes. Well, I'm a little pressed for time. Well, you're his agent. You can tell him you'll get every cent I owe him as soon as I make a few more trading runs. Nothing doing. You tell him yourself. Mr. Dano, here, and I'll give you a list of my supplies. The Voorhees residence. This is Voris. Lawson. Marsden's in port and means to sail again with the next tide. He won't sail. I saw the Wahari when she dropped anchor. And I've had the port officers attach her for the money Marsden owes me. Got plenty of sailcloth? Yes, lots. I think that'll just about take care of everything. All right, Jim. Oh, by the way, Jim, I was thinking. It's going to take you a long time to recoup your losses with just one ship. I have a proposition. Why don't you get someone to sail your schooner and you take over the management of my trading post down at Pulamati Island? 
Pulamate, Pulamate. Well, that's where the strange stories about Haunted Harbor come from, isn't it? About demons, deep sea monsters, and lost men. There's something strange going on down there, Jim. Why, the natives are scared crazy. Why, they won't even work the copra. Well, there must be something strange behind it. Yes, but we can't find what it is. I can't even keep a manager. Now, that's where you would come in. You could go down there, buckle into that situation, where you could ferret out the mystery and get things going again. Thanks, John. I might take a crack at it later. But right now, I'd like to make a couple more runs and square my debts. Well, if that's the way you want it, Jim. But remember, that job is yours whenever you want it. I won't forget. Thanks. I get this stuff to you, Mel. Good. Come on, Tommy. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I told you, you better settle with Voorhees. What are you driving at? Hey, Jim! Oh, Skipper! Voorhees just had the ship attached. Put the whole crew ashore. I should have expected that from him. You can't blame him for thinking it's all pretty fishy. What do you mean? It looks pretty convenient for a dead broke skipper to have his ship disappear with the consignment of gold bullion aboard. Lawson, you and I are not going to get along. I don't like you either. the first-class job of overhauling, Chief. Come on, Jim, let's see about getting the ship released. Voyage is the only man who can do anything about that. And I'm going to see that he does. Our operations at Haunted Harbor seem to be going quite well, Mr. Carter. Forget Mr. Carter. His name is Kane. I'd like that understood. I understand perfectly. Mr. Carter's record wouldn't stand too close an investigation. Never mind my record. Just sign this receipt for the return of your money. With interest. Oh, no. That won't do. I've decided to take a 50-50 share in your project. You're crazy. You can't gouge me like you do these fool sailors. The whole scheme was mine. All you did was put up the money at 10%. And all I have to do now is have you arrested. I don't need you to run things. And I don't need you any longer. Lawson said I'd find you here, Captain Marsden. Lawson? Yes, I got here just a minute ago. You made good use of that minute. Mr. Voorhees is quite dead. Now, wait a minute. I didn't kill him. I found him lying here when I came in. He was trying to tell me something when he died. 
You're under arrest for murder, Captain. I'd advise you to save your story for your trial. Marsden to hang today. Captain James Marsden, well known spawn to the gallows at high noon for the murder of Frederick Boris. The colonial governor has refused Marsden's plea for a stay of execution to permit further search for Carter, the mysterious man who Marsden claims is the real killer. Well, they're hanging an innocent man. There won't be any hanging if you'll help us free Jim. How can I? You knew I'd do anything in the world to save Jim Marsden's life. But it wouldn't help him to have myself thrown into jail. Listen, Tommy can handle a jailbreak, all right. But we want a ship with a getaway. Yeah, I have a schooner out there in the bay. Nobody aboard her. But listen. I'm a law-abiding man. I'll have nothing to do with jailbreaks. But if somebody was to steal my boat, I wouldn't help it. You're a prince, Mr. Galbraith. And if that boat sails to Pulamati, that manager's job at my trading post is still open. Good enough. I'll tell Tommy to get to work. Say, do you know anything about these contraptions? Not much. Perhaps the carburetor. Sorry, I had to do it. No use, Marsden. I mean to live as long as I can. All right. We'll have to come and get you. Give me a hand. Jim, they're gaining. It's wide open now. Not 
does it. Yank's waiting aboard the schooner. We'll join him and head for Pulamani. Good. That's a non-treaty port and they can't extradite me. I'd like to see Lawson's face when he hears you got away. So would I. I believe you're guilty of compounding a felony. You helped Marsden escape from jail and gave him your ship to get away in. It's not my fault my schooner was stolen. The harbor should have been better policed. Storm warning. A hurricane is coming in from the southwest. No ship is to leave this port. All wireless equipped vessels have been warned to seek shelter. Only three men to man that schooner in a hurricane. Well, that'll save the state a hanging job. <laughs>
board.
Then they pinned the murder of Voorhees on me. And I managed to escape from Momoa just in time. My name won't be cleared until I get the real murderer. A man named Carter. Have you any idea where you could find him? Well, I'm convinced of what Voorhees said, that he's somewhere on Pool Monte. That's why I took the job of running Galbraith's trading post there. While well, I'm looking for Carter, I'll for the natives to bring in the Cobra. I'm afraid that won't be easy. The coconut plantations are close to Haunted Harbor, and the natives are afraid to go near it. How did you know that? I've been in Pulamati often. You see, my father has been doctoring the natives on those islands a long time. Naturally, since the sloop was my only home, I went along. You lived aboard the sloop? Yes. I wonder if you'd help me. Why, certainly, after all you've done for us. Well, I was thinking, as long as you're so well acquainted with the natives, why, why not stay over at Pulamati a while and help me persuade them to gather a copra again? Besides, your father will need plenty of rest and quiet until he recovers, and, well, well, there's plenty of room in the company bungalow for all of us. Uh, what do you say? It's a deal. Oh, fine. Uh, well, I'll radio the clerk and tell him to have the bungalow ready for us. Uh, would you take the wheel? Certainly. an extra set of keys to the store, and uh, this contains the combination of the office safe. I also have the accounts and inventories ready for your inspection. Thank you, Dranger. I trust you found everything here to your satisfaction, Captain Marston. I'd like to stay on as your assistant. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to have you. Oh, by the way, Dranger, I want to ask you, uh, what do you know about Haunted Harbor? Nothing personally, but there is something terrible down there. Of all the natives who went there, only one has ever returned. He came back a raving maniac, babbling of demons and sea monsters. There must be some natural explanation for that. Perhaps. But the natives won't go near the place to get copra. As a result, our trade with them has dropped to nothing. <sighs> Looks as though it's up to me to go to Haunted Harbor and solve the mystery. Don't try it, Captain. You'll never come back. How's your father, Patricia? He's resting comfortably. Oh, that's fine. Dranka, I'll be down at the store tonight at 8 o'clock to check the inventories. I'll have everything ready, Captain. Good day. Good day. And the new company manager is Jim Marsden. Marsden? What's he doing here? He maybe came here to find the man who killed Voorhees. He can't connect me with it. No one saw me at Amor. Kane, did Marsden ever know you? I mean, when your name was Carter? No. But he's a tough opponent, and with him on the island, our whole setup is in danger. Yes, he's already asking questions about Haunted Harbor. He even plans to go there. And the sooner we take care of him, the better. He's coming to the store tonight to check the inventories. That's good enough. I'll send a man to do the job, and we'll fix it so you won't be suspected.
I was working on the invoices. Fred. Take it easy. I'll get you the bungalow and have Miss Harding take care of that. We'll come back here in the morning and straighten things out. Come on. talking to the chief about getting his people back to work in the copra plantation. Good. What did he say? The plantations are too close to Haunted Harbor. The natives are afraid to go near them. Did you arrange an interview for me to see the chief? No. He won't allow you in the village, but he's sending his son, Cassin, to meet you at Koala Pass. He will take your message to his father. Well, I guess that'll be some help. What time am I to meet him? This afternoon at 3 o'clock. Now, just give us time to have lunch. I'll be back after I see Castle. All right. DX calling X2. DX calling X2. DX calling X2. This is X2. Come in, D. The Harding girl arranged for Marsden to meet Cassim in Kuala Pass at 3 o'clock today. We'll take care of it. That's bad. Marsden may make a deal with Cassim. He won't have a chance. I don't get it. Well, it's simple. Knock off Cassim before he gets to the pass. Then the natives will think Marsden murdered their chief's son. Pretty neat. Sure. Take Snell and get out to the pass. Right. Let's take him to the bungalow. Get going, I'll hold him back. country and stop that car.
He's wounded. Let's take him to the bungalow. Get going. I'll hold him back. country and stop that car. Why did they attack Castle? We don't know. He was unconscious when we got him back to the village. The chief was grateful to Jim for saving his son's life, but he refuses to ask the natives to work on the plantations. Is Marsden still at the village? No, we went from the village to Kane's mine to see if he could find out anything about Haunted Harbor. And he wants you to meet him there and bring a couple of extra boxes of ammunition. What does he expect to shoot? Perhaps the demons of Haunted Harbor. Or maybe Carter. The guy that done the killing they tried to hang Jim for. Oh, on my way, I'll drop you off at the bungalow. Marsden's on his way to see you. He intends to investigate Haunted Harbor at once. Why is he coming here? Perhaps he wants to check up on you and your men. Don't forget, he's convinced that Voorhees' murderer is on this island. All right, we'll take care of him. You think that Marsden suspects it's your Carter? I think not, but he's dangerous and must be eliminated. Set the trap in the mine tunnel. When Marsden arrives, I'll manage to send him down there. And don't come back here. Join Greg at the cabin in Dark Canyon. Jim Marsden, manager of Galbraith's trading post. Oh, yes. Glad to know you, Marsden. I've been intending to come over to the store and see you. I understand your company is having difficulty getting native labor for the Copra. That's what I wanted to see you about. The native chief tells me that the harbor adjoining the coconut plantation is haunted by demons, sea serpents, and monsters. You ever hear about it? Yes, I have. However, I have never seen any of these monsters. But there is something strange going on beneath those waters, something dangerous. Men who've worked for me have gone there and never returned. 
Well, have you any explanation for it? That is, any natural explanation? Frankly, I haven't. I'd tell my people to stay away from Haunted Harbor, and that would be my advice to you. Oh, I can't do that. I've got to have native labor. The only way I can get it is to find out what's back of this whole business. I'm going to have a look at that Haunted Harbor with one of my men who's due here any minute. Oh, I meant to ask you, Kane. Uh, did you ever hear of a man named Carter here on Pulamate? Carter? No, I don't think so. Uh, why not ask some of the men in the mine? They might know. I'd go with you, but I have to finish this assay. Oh, I can find my way. When my man arrives, will you send him down there? Certainly. Thank you, Kane. Not at all. See you later. We got a job to do. Marsden's coming here. He's going to meet with an accident. How soon do you expect him? I don't know. You wait down the tunnel by the signal switch. If he asks you any questions, tell him you're new here. And other men in the mine will talk to him. OK. I'll stay here by the ore dump. Give me one light when Marsden comes in, and two when he starts under the dump. for a man named Carter. Mr. Kane thought maybe one of you men might know him. Never heard of him. We're new on this job. There's some more men working down that way. They might know him. Thanks. up there must have give way. Come on, help me get him out of here. I gotta get him with Kane's office. That old ore dump should have been repaired long ago. I'm terribly sorry, Marsden. Oh, forget it. Nobody's to blame. Can I send you to town in my car? Oh, Yank brought a car. I've got to get started to Haunted Harbor. You better rest up a bit before you try that. The road only goes part way, and it's a long, hard climb from there on. We'll make it. Well, if you insist, good luck, Marsden. Thanks. X2 calling DC. X2 calling DC. Come in, X2. Marsden and his pal escaped the trap. They're on the way to Haunted Harbor. Snell said he was killed. Never mind what he said. Listen to me. They're in a car and they'll have to go to the cliff road. Have Snell get some men and stop them. the rock. 
box. Keep shooting. I'm going to try to get around behind him. shooting yank the other one went this way there he goes up the cliff from the edge. I'm going up. Keep shooting. I'm going to try to get around behind him. shooting yank. The other one went this way. Keep 
back from the edge. I'm going up. Jim? Yeah. Well, sure no way to get up that cliff now. Someone's mighty anxious to keep us from getting to Haunted Harbor. We'll get there, one way or the other. There's something about all this I can't fathom. You were attacked our first night on the island. The native chief's son was attacked on his way to confer with us about the copra situation. Yeah, it looks as though someone doesn't want me to get the copra business going. Perhaps a rival trading company has men working undercover. Mm, well, that's possible. That doesn't explain the mysterious terror of Haunted Harbor, or why someone's so determined to keep me from reaching there. Then that means you'll be in danger every time you try to reach the harbor. I suppose so. But I've got a job to do, and I can't let Galbraith down. If it for him, I'd have been hanged for a murder I didn't commit. Have you found any trace of the man, Carter, who did the killing? No, and I haven't any idea what he looks like. I am convinced he's somewhere on this island. Well, I've got to get out to Point Neptune and overhaul that company motorboat before we make the trip to Haunted Harbor. Uh, would you care to come along? No, thanks. I'm going to pick up some medicine supplies from the store and take them out to the native village. It might sort of help along our good neighbor policy. <laughs> well, we need some good neighbors. Seem to have plenty of bad ones on this island. It's unfortunate the fall didn't kill Marsden. Well, anyhow, we stopped him from getting through to Haunted Harbor. Marsden won't give up. He's probably making other plans right now. The sooner we can find out what those plans are, the sooner we can spike them. I think I'll have a little talk with Marsden and see what information I can pick up. I expected to find Captain Marsden here. I see. My name is Kane. I operate a gold mine on the island. Oh, yes. I've heard Captain Marsden speak of you. I'm sorry he isn't here. My name is Hardy. Dr. Hardy? Yes. I've heard many fine things about your medical work among the natives here and on other islands. Thank you. I've had a very interesting life traveling about, meeting people. Have you ever been in a moor? Not recently, Doctor. Why? Your face is very familiar. I have a feeling that you've been one of my patients somewhere. Oh, I'm afraid you must be mistaken, Doctor. I'd have remembered you had we met. Could it have been Singapore? No. Ceylon? No. Shanghai? No, I've never been in any of those places. Well, I must be going, Doctor. I'll see Marsden some other time. So I'll tell the Captain that you were here. If you will, please. Very well, Doctor. That was Hardy. He went through his casebook and identified you as Carter, a wounded convict he treated in Shanghai. So that's where he saw me. Are you the only one he's talked to? Yes. Marsden and his pals are at Point Neptune. The girl has gone to the native village. Hardy wants me to drive after We've her. We've got to silence him. That won't be hard. I he mustn't be around here when it happens. Go to the native village and give the girl her father's message. Tell her about Carter? Certainly not. Just say that he phoned for her to return at once. Meantime, I'll radio Greg and have him take care of the doctor before she gets back here. 
I get it. It's unfortunate that you walked in on this. You'll have to come along with me in case I run into any trouble. You're driving me to Dark Canyon. Get out that door. Dark Canyon. I saw Carter. He is. headquarters. Greg, calling X2. Calling X2. Come in, Greg. I took care of everything, but the Harding girl returned before I could get away, so I had to bring her to the cabin. You'll have to get rid of her. We can't turn her loose. Of course not. I said get rid of her. All right.
What'd you stop for? We can't overtake them. We'll block the road below. Give me a hand. What'd you stop for? We can't overtake them. We'll block the road below. Give me a hand. For the girl? Dr. Harding told him. Harding? Then he may have told him about me. No. He tried to. He said, I saw Carter. And then he passed out before he could reveal that you were Carter. <laughs> then we have nothing to worry about on that score. Now we can concentrate on blocking Marsden's plans to visit Haunted Harbor. I'm depending on you to keep me informed. I think he's planning to go by water. Thinking isn't good enough. I want to know definitely. Then I'll drop in at his bungalow and offer my condolences on the old man's death. Her father's death must have been a terrible blow to Miss Harding. Naturally. She's borne up under it very bravely. She has plenty of courage. I wonder what's to become of her now that she's alone in the world. I suppose you want to go back to the States. There's a ship due in in a few days, and I'll book her passage. No, Jim. I intend to stay on this island. But, Patricia... You came here to find Carter so that you could clear your name. Now, I want to find him, too, because we know that he's responsible for my father's death. Please, Jim, let me see this thing through. All right. We'll work it out together. It'll mean getting through to Haunted Harbor in spite of everything Carter's men do to stop us. I must warn you again, Captain. No one has ever gone there and lived to tell of it. All the more reason to find out what's back of this whole thing. We'll start as soon as I finish working the motorboat at Point Neptune. 
I want that automatic rifle at the store. Get the rifle, then pick up Miss Hardy on the way back. Both of you meet me at the point. All right, sir. Marsden's working on the motorboat at Point Neptune. He's going directly from there to Haunted Harbor. I'm taking an automatic rifle out to him. An automatic rifle? We don't want him armed like that. Put dummy bullets in the rifle and take your time about getting there, understand? Right. Meantime, I'll send Greg and Snell to keep Marsden from ever getting started. Drop those guns. You made too much noise coming through that brush. I'm not used to driving with a rifle at my elbow. It can't harm you, explosives out of my saddlebag and we'll finish this job. Thank you. 
It got here just in time. The boat's all ready, and we can shove off for Haunted Harbor right away. Good. Here's your rifle, Captain. Aren't you going with us, Dragner? Oh, no, thank you. I've seen men start for there, but I've never seen any of them return. However, I wish you luck. Oh, here's some extra cartridges. You'll need them. Thanks. Point Neptune before we finish. I know. Dranga radioed me a full report. Marsden, the girl have already left the point. Headed for Haunted Harbor? Yes. He's bought himself a one-way passage. When we round the next point, we'll be entering Haunted Harbor. Now that we're nearing it, I'm getting sort of a queer feeling. A kind of premonition of evil. <laughs> You're thinking about all those stories you've heard. Don't let it get you. There's the harbor. Get ahead. the next point we'll be entering Haunted Harbor. Now that we're nearing it, I'm getting sort of a queer feeling. A kind of premonition of evil. <laughs> Harbor 
but certainly seems quiet and peaceful enough. Yeah. to be alive, Captain Marsden. Remember, I warned you of the dangers of Haunted Harbor. <laughs> no wonder the natives are afraid to go near the place. Weird sea serpents rising from the water. You know, there is something strange going on beneath those waters. I still mean to find out what it is. Don't force your luck, Captain. Jim, what can you do against creatures that live at the bottom of the sea? I can go down there and look for them. I've got a complete diving outfit aboard the schooner. That's a good idea. I'll go to the ship and get the stuff for you. You wouldn't know where to find it. The cases are stored in the hold. But you can roll me out there tonight and help me unload the equipment. I'll be ready. Good. Jim, do you think you should risk diving in the harbor? I've got to. The natives won't work the copra as long as this danger threatens. My job is to produce copra. Once I get the business going, I can concentrate on finding Carter. Diving apparatus? We've got to stop that. It might expose everything. And put a nice tight noose around your neck. Never mind that. If I'm exposed, we'll all hang together. You've got to take care of Margin when you get him aboard the ship. I can't do a job like that alone. All right, all right. I'll send Dunning to help you. He'll swim out as soon as he sees you and Marsden board the schooner. out on the deck. Throw that helmet overboard. Don't let it splash.
Thanks, Dranga. It's too bad you killed him. We might have questioned him. How'd he come aboard? I, I don't know, Captain. He sneaked up and struck me from behind. Then as I lay half stunned, he threw the diving helmet overboard. Oh, so that's why he was sent here. To prevent my diving expedition to Haunted Harbor. It looks that way. Oh, I'm not beaten yet. I'll get another diving outfit and a mower. You can't do that. If you're seen at a mower, you'll be arrested on that old murder charge. I don't intend to be seen. I can use the company plane and be there shortly after daylight tomorrow morning. I'll take Miss Harding along with me. She can contact Galbraith while I keep undercover. You think of everything, Captain. It must be very discouraging to the men who are trying to destroy you. Yeah. Marsden took the knife away from Dunning and killed him with it. Where's Marsden now? He and the Harding girl are flying to Amoa. That plays right into our hands. All we have to do is notify the police at Amoa. There's a price on Marsden's Don't head. Don't be a fool. If he's arrested again, it'll throw the whole case wide open. We don't know how much he's learned about the secret of Haunted Harbor. We've got to dispose of him before the police catch him. But he's on his way. What can you do? I'll radio Lawson at Amoa and have him trap Marsden before he can contact Galbraith. will keep all appointments at the ship's Bell Cafe, Galbraith. You certainly can't go there. I'll get Mr. Galbraith. All right. Have him meet me out back at the cafe. yet, miss. Who do you want to see? Mr. Galbraith. Yeah, he's here. In the office. Come in. I expected to find Mr. Galbraith here, Mr. Lawson. What is the meaning of this? Don't cause any trouble, Miss Harding, and you won't be hurt. Sit down. What do you mean? You came to Amoa with Captain Jim Marsden. Where is he? I wouldn't tell you if I knew. Oh, I think you will. You see, Marsden's wanted for murder, and it's your duty to help find him. You understand anyone protecting a murderer becomes equally guilty under the law. Marsden isn't a murderer, and you're not the law. Call in the police if you dare, and I'll name the real murderer. The only talking you'll do will be to me. Perhaps this little device will help persuade you. One of your hands in there, you might be glad to tell me where Marsden's hiding. Bring her over here. She's out cold. Get some water. Get back. There we are.
here. She's out cold. in here. I heard shots. Jim Marsden was here. He killed Neville and then ran out the back way. There's a five thousand dollar reward for him, dead or alive. You shouldn't have told him about Marsden. We don't want the police to get him. If he tells him enough about Haunted Harbor to cause an investigation, they'll find out that Kane is really Carter. They'll never catch Marsden. He had too good a start. A friend of mine lives in here, a tobacco peddler named Tayola. I think he'll hide us until tonight. Good. So that's why we're here. I need your help, Tayola. You do not have to ask for that. Good. We'll stay here until tonight. And I've got to go to town to see Galbraith by getting some diving equipment. By now, the police will know you're here to see him. They'll watch his every move. It's too dangerous. I think not. If Taylor will fix me up in one of his outfits, and let me take your peddling route tonight. What do you say? I say you can do it. But first, you must take lessons. I will teach you. Fine. Watch closely. Tobacco, cigarettes. Tobacco, cigarettes. Tobacco, cigarettes. No, they. Tobacco, cigarettes. Tobacco, cigarettes, Mr. Galbraith. No. These are a special blend for one. No. you to solve the mystery of Haunted Harbor. Prove my innocence. Have 
got Marsden yet? No, but he can't escape. Everybody's out after that $5,000 reward. My own men are watching Galbraith's house and office. I told you not to let that peddler in here. Throw him out. There's no diving equipment in town. I'll order someone to ship it to you. Here's the bartender. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Twan. I told you to stay out of here. Jim Worth! <laughs> I thought he was Teola. Yeah, you had me fooled, too. That's Teola's headdress. And Trey. That means they're working together. Then Marsden and the girl must be hiding in Teola's cave. Right. Send some men out there at once. Wait a minute. There's a $5,000 reward for Marsden, dead or alive. I'll send the men out there. You notify the police that Marsden's hiding in Teola's cave. When they get there, they'll find him dead, and we can claim the reward. I get it. The fact that they recognize me puts you in a bad spot. Don't worry about me. Now, there is something to worry about. When they figure out that you helped me, it may mean a long prison term for you. You've got to get away from here. Here, take this. With this, I can return to my native island, a rich man. I am grateful. Well, I'm grateful to you too, Teola. I must pack a few things before I leave. We better start the plane. You ain't going anywhere. Go ahead, start something, Marsden. When the police get here, they'll find you dead anyway. We'll collect the reward. Yes, I'm all right. We better leave here before the police get here. You better come with us, Teola. No, Tuan. I can still gather my things and get away in time. Well, so long again. Many thanks. Goodbye, Teola. Farewell.
close. Too close for comfort. We better let the boys know we're on the way back. Our radio drank it to tell them. And they expect to land at Durian Flats about 8 o'clock in the morning. Marsden said to tell Yank and Tommy to meet him with the station wagon. But you didn't tell them. I had to. They came in just as he was signing off. But I told them he said to meet him at 9 o'clock. That'll give us time to prepare a little welcome for Captain Marsden. Craig, you and Snell will go to Durian Flats first thing in the morning. Well, only one more charge to plant, and then we're ready for Mars. in the right places. Well, it's a cinch march this plane can't miss all of them. Hurry up, he's overdue. We're a little late, aren't we? Oh, this headwind has slowed us down a bit. This is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Join us next week for part two of Haunted Harbor, starring Kane Richmond, one of my favorite actors. And if you can, tune into YouTube, Donald O'Malley, or Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Give it a like, and you'll catch any of my previous shows. Thanks again. See you next week. Stay safe. Good night.